Well, good morning, everybody. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm Barry Keenan, the CEO of Nirvanic. So today I want to I discuss our uh, Your Modulation platform. This is a, a wireless power transfer device, which is uh, really, it, it's, a, it's a wearable that powers an implant inside, and that's your implanted uh, pulse generator that provides uh, neurostimulation. Our, our first indication is uh, neuropathic pain of peripheral, peripheral nerve origin. Just to show you what the devices that are out there and, 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 and what wireless power transfer devices look like, on the right here you can see a spinal cord stimulator, and that's your traditional neurostimulation device to, uh, to block pain signals in the spine going to the brain. Now with peripheral nerve stimulation, you treat the, uh, the, the, the problem locally, so you interface with the, with the peripheral nerve. Clearly you can see uh, which, which device the, the patient would prefer. Now, when you're, when you're going after uh, peripheral nerves, you need a much, much smaller device. And that's what you have with the wireless power transfer. To have a small device, you've got to take the battery out. And that's why you have to, you have to follow this, this profile. Spinal cord stimulators have been, have been attempted in peripheral nerve stimulation, but they're just too big. As you can see, the size of the can that houses a battery and electronics just isn't, isn't suitable for, for this sort of therapy. Now, there are uh, three other devices out there on the market. Uh, and this, so this is a, this is a, a 510K device, uh, and there's, there's uh, three predicates available. Now, the implants are all very much the same. They're all extremely small, and they don't have a battery. Uh, where we, we're, we're trying to differentiate on the wearable, so the, 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 the wearable that, that powers the device and controls the, the waveforms being, being sent to the implant. Now, the wearables with the, with the competitor devices are large, and that is a, that is a patient problem. I mean, when you, where you've got uh, a large wearable, you can't treat certain areas. It's, it's uncomfortable. You know, where, where do you put the device? Uh, can you wear it on your arm for, let's say, treating something like, uh, like, like carpal tunnel? Um, or um, just, just in general, you know, can you wear it, wear it at your back if you're, if you're treating uh, lower, lower extremities? And you know, patients, of course, want to be discreet about treating their disorder. So this is, uh, this is actually a major differentiator for the patient. Now we, uh, here's our first generation, which was, which was tested in, in a few animal studies, but it wasn't really practical. It was, it was too big. And so by working with uh, several, several um, pain physicians, we determined uh, what the device should look like. And what we realized was we could run a lead with the, with the IPG at the end, the implantable pulse generator, up, uh, up, to, the, up to the surface of the skin, put it in a, um, uh, in a subcutaneous compartment, and the wearable sits above that. What that allows us is to have a much smaller battery and, and uh, a, uh, a, a, a much smaller wearable. And that's really, what, that's really our, our, our key differentiator. Now, this is a platform, and it's very easily turned into a spinal cord stimulator, if you want, by by p putting connectors and more leads and more IPGs on, on the actual uh, on, on the actual PCB board, we're also uh, we're also working on uh, a, a occipital nerve stim uh, stimulation indication for migraine, which is a highly sought after market, and uh, in partnership with UCLA, we're developing uh, uh, sensing uh, chips where we can eventually do closed loop uh, control. So the PNS market is is growing quite a bit. Right now, there's only three small companies in the market. The spinal cord stimulation market now is massive, and that actually accounts for 50% of the whole neuromodulation market. So think about that. Bioelectronic medicine, I mean, spinal cord stimulation has revenues that are close to 50% of, of that whole market. Of course, it's dominated by the big three, uh, and, and so it's a, it's, it's a difficult market to get into. However, None of the big three have, uh, have a horse in the PNS race because the SCS devices don't work well in, in, in PNS because of the mechanical design and being able to get to those tricky nerves. Plus, there's so many different nerves outside of the uh, central nervous system to get to. The other thing is the PNS devices will cut into the SCS market because you're treating the same disorders. You're treating the same, uh, the, the same, the same neuropathy. And by treating, by treating it locally, you can have a, uh, a minimally invasive procedure to put this device in. So, so it'll definitely cut into that market. And, well, without a doubt, it'll, it'll, it'll be prescribed sooner on the treatment continuum before you get the spinal cord stimulator. We're also looking at the occipital nerve stimulation market. 
for for Migrin. Migrin is a is a is a massive market. It um, uh, I mean it, it affects. There's actually two million Americans have chronic migraine, which is migraine for longer than 15 days of the month, and they've also got drug refractory, so they have absolutely no therapy at all. So this is the the, the size of the wearable we're we're, we're shooting for. Uh, it's really going to be governed by the by, by the size of the battery that goes in it. So we're looking at a, a rechargeable coin cell battery, and this is just a, a comparison with uh, with the competitive devices. So here's a side by side on 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 the on the sizes of of the wearable. You can see the size of the implant. I mean, these are micro implants. I mean, they're extremely small. The patient's not going to feel anything like you do with other other devices. The, our wearable, as you can see, 3.2 cc's is, uh, is a fraction of the size of, of the competitors, and that's our real differentiation. Also, we have, uh, with, with, with this technology, we can power multiple implants with the one wearable. Now, that's important for, for certain indications, such as uh, neuropathic knee pain or, or shoulder. So this is an example of a, of a wearable treating a carpal tunnel. So you can imagine you're treating carpal tunnel, you're uh, stimulating the, the median nerve. Where do you put your wearable? Well, this, this wearable will fit nicely as a watch where the, the, um, the receiver and the pulse generator will sit underneath the watch and then the ladle will go right to the nerve. Uh, the other devices, as you saw, the, the wearables are just too big to, to, for, those, uh, for that kind of disorders. For chronic headache, um, the big three did massive pivotal studies and, and they all had their clinical efficacy endpoints, but they actually failed with safety because they had leads coming up past the neck. With this wireless power transfer device, we can get the same efficacy by delivering the same therapy, but we can place the, the implant above the neckline. And we think we can get, uh, get around all the adverse events from these previous studies. Uh, today, we've got uh, nine uh, patent applications in for the technology. We just got one patent approved for the uh, telemetry of the device. So that's uh, neuromodulation therapy with uh, uh, two-way radio communication. So right now, we're, we're on our Gen 2 device. Uh, we finished our first pilot study. There was, uh, there was some migration in the study, so we've, uh, we've changed the mechanical design to put in more anchors and to, and to treat that migration. So we'll go back into the, uh, the lab next month and test that. Following that, we'll, we'll be ready to do our, our GLP large animal study for, for FDA submission and uh, should finish that in back, back compatibility testing uh, Q1 next year. So we're looking, we're looking for FDA clearance with this device uh, the, latter part of, the latter part of next year. While we continue to add features, uh, and we'll, we'll, do another, we'll do another special 510K before we, before we go to market. So we're looking to raise anywhere between six and 10 million. Six will take us to, to market. It'll take us to a market, uh, it'll get us to a market ready device. And, uh, but then we'll need a Series B to, uh, you know, to, to launch and, and figure out you know, what our, you know, you know, how much sales people we want to put on the road. But uh, with the 10 million, we can do a soft launch. So we have a, we have a great team behind this. Uh, every, most, most of the people are consultants right now. Once we, uh, once we raise Series A, we will, uh, we will hire uh, FTEs and, and, and fill out the management team. But we're working with all the top uh, contract manufacturers and, and developers, and we're 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 moving uh, we're moving quite quick, and we hope to get the market in 24. Thank you for your time.